So this is the final video of the Hyperloop shell building process. And here I am demolding the part, uh, trying not to mess it up too much because the really light skins and the really light foam are super easy to destroy. And uh, again, I'm wishing I'd used the Teflon. This thing would pop right out uh, instead of the wax. And what I'm doing here will turn out to be a mistake. I'm sliding a very long, shallow wedge that is actually just an eighth inch veneer um, underneath in hopes that it will lift the part out as opposed to bending it out. Demolding is always a great chance to break your part, especially with really, really light skins and really low density core. If this had been honeycomb, it would have been harder. Um, but here I'm using the geometry. There's this part stuck up front. You can see it's bowed a little. I'm gonna I'm waiting for it to pop. It's not popping. I'm gonna press, and there it goes. It's only one little bit was stuck up there. Um, but I've probably done some damage to the edges. And we'll see how that looks in a minute. Uh, the extra laminate I added on there, peel plies off that. We'll see now how stiff the shell is, whether that was necessary. But looking at it, overall it looks pretty nice. Definitely messed it up a little in front. I'm going to need to repair that before I do a closeout laminate that covers the edge. A little bit in the back as well. But overall, very fair and uh, quite light and stiffer than you'd think it would be, given how little material is in there. There is the area where I really messed it up. So I had to take it home to my backyard and basement to finish the rest of it. We we're in a really hurry uh, near the end of things. I need to get it to the painters. Here I am taping off some areas where there are some uh, holes and skimming in the places I messed it up in the back with the demolding wedges and also with that long piece of veneer I used to lift it out of the mold. Because the thing was done in one shot, there's some distortion in the weave and in the inside, a couple places where uh, the core had slid up and I had to grind through and do a repair in the back uh, and add a little bit more laminate around the trailing edge of the part where it will get cut so it's not super sharp. Did a little fairing around the edges. Um, and did a closeout laminate of one layer of 200 gram slash six ounce carbon uh, cut of the plus or minus 45. I've laid it up on painter's plastic, painter's plastic on both sides uh, to get a minimum amount of resin. And here I am uh, sticking it on there because it's plus or minus 45 fiber orientation. Uh, it conforms really nicely. And uh, I'm doing the same with the peel ply. The peel ply is also cut on the bias or with a, the woven strands running at plus or minus 45 degrees to the joint using the fiberglass breather uh, method again with a little bit of green flow mesh here and there and did one little repair on the inside where I had ground through the foam cleaning up the inside demolding that upper edge taking the bag off I should have done plus or minus 45 fiberglass for the breather as well. That was a shortcut I took, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to pot this edge in thick filler to make the entire bottom planer. So I pulled all that off again um, around the part. It looked really good. Here it is. You can see how nice and smooth that is, and that covers the entire... I brought it up a little extra to cover some of the places I'd done some damage. And on the inside, ground back that hand laid part got all the excess resin off uh, I think it made it stiffer but it would have been much nicer to do that in one original operation but the perimeter uh, sanded it feathered it in and it all looked really nice and then I took some epoxy filler and did a real heavy quick fill around the edges I find it's easier to put more on um, and takes a little bit more time sanding it off than to risk having to make multiple applications with multiple drying times. The first bit was done with this epoxy filler. And from then on out, I used a vinyl ester. 
Here I am potting it to a release coated tabletop. And these are some pinholes that were in some of the areas behind the foam core. The foam bridge, I had to go back and do a bunch of filling. This is, again, a consequence of doing it all in one shot. But with a couple of rounds of 545 primer, it started to look pretty nice. We took it down and tested it on the vehicle frame. Everything fit pretty well. And we're in a big hurry to get it to the paint shop where they did some final priming, blocked it all out, and did an incredible job with the paint and graphics. It looked really good, and they didn't have an awful lot of time to turn this around before the unveiling uh, when the team showed off what they had been working on. Some things that would have been nice to do differently, in hindsight, I think certainly having more time to put it together would have been great. And uh, if I had been better about asking questions about features, um, I ended up making the whole thing six millimeters longer than it should have been just because I failed to ask a question up front. And that was definitely avoidable, although it didn't seem to make much difference in the finished part. The layup was originally intended to be done in multiple steps with the first skin and because of time I ended up doing it all at once. I think that certainly using a better release system would have helped. The Teflon would have been great over the whole part. It would have saved a lot of time in finishing and I think it would have uh, minimized the amount of damage that I did uh, while releasing the part. Um, that was definitely a day worth of setback filling all that before I could do the closeout taping around the perimeter of the part. Adding the extra laminate to the single skin zone uh, as a second step, that was something I did after talking with the paint shop and being concerned that they wouldn't have enough stiffness to block out a nice finished paint job. Wish I had thought of that earlier and have been able to do that um, in the original layup. I would have put that extra ply of carbon in between the two main skins. That would have been a lot tidier and lighter and less of a mess. Um, and I wouldn't have had to go back and repair some of the burn throughs I made on the inside trying to tidy it up. Um, 200 grams of carbon is not that much when you're going at it with a sander or a grinder, um, especially when you're in a hurry. Uh, overall, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, the weight was around six kilograms, was a little more than we had hoped. I think honeycomb and prepreg would have definitely been lighter, but the tooling required would have been substantially more expensive and the time to build the part uh, would have been a lot more. Um, all up, the materials for this job were about $2,000, including all the mold making materials and as a little more than 100 hours of work from start to finish and not including the finishing the paint job which I don't know how long that took but they only did it in about a week and uh, I know that included a couple of shots of primer and a lot of uh, nice blocking but the way I delivered it to them it was fair and smooth but certainly not ready for top coat the uh, distortion in the glass for having been done in one shot was not ideal. If it had been skin in one cure and then uh, core and then the inner skin, then it would have been a lot better continuity to the fiber and the outside skin. You would not have had all that ugly um, wrinkling or warping. And um, I'm not sure structurally, given the demands on this, whether it would have made a difference, but it would have looked nicer. Um, and if we had been as originally planned doing this as a clear finished part, then I certainly would have done that. And it would have taken a little bit longer. But overall, it worked really well. It was a chance to show how to build a relatively high performance light part using very ordinary uh, materials and processing techniques. The CNC routers were pretty basic, uh, readily available in most places and 
just use vacuum pumps and some basic hand tools to do everything else. So my hope was it would be a an example of what you can do with relatively low performance stuff and just a way to show the combination of hand building direct tooling and uh, managing parts and how to get as good a result out of it as you can uh, keeping in mind that you're not achieving sort of the ultimate performance or, or laminate quality that you would get with other materials but in a lot of cases it's it's plenty good and I think this was a situation where it worked out pretty well. Thanks for checking it out and um, hope that you learned something. I certainly enjoyed building it and also having a chance to put together a bunch of videos which is a new thing for me but so far it's been a lot of fun.